know what is going on, guys. Welcome back to another video. So we are nearing the end of the conference finals after the Florida Panthers win up 3-2 with a 3-2 win over the Rangers last night. In Dallas Stars versus Edmonton, a pivotal Game 5 is going down tonight in Dallas. So I thought I'd give my updated thoughts on these conference finals. What do the Rangers have to do? What's the Rangers' problems? What do they have to do if they want to come back? What has led to Florida kind of dominating the Rangers in this series on top of Dallas and Edmonton? What has to happen in Game 5 in order for a team to pick up a massive W and just overall my updated series odds and cup odds. We're going to go through all that right now because I haven't really done a breakdown on the actual like series in a couple days. So let's get into it. Up first, we'll start with the Rangers versus the Florida Panthers considering this happened last night. This is fresh in my mind. So when looking at this, when looking at the Rangers, Florida overall, I hate to generalize. It's it's an easy cop out why the Rangers are, are down in this situation right now. But at the end of the day, their stars are not rising. We talk about this happens with the Toronto Maple Leafs. It is happening right now with the New York Rangers. They can dominate the Washington Capitals, dominate a Carolina team. That, that is good, but they, they tend to choke in the playoffs. But against the Florida Panthers, Zabinijad, Kreider, Panarin have not stepped up to the occasion. Zabinijad got his first two points last night, two assists, but it was mainly off the backs of Kreider getting that breakaway goal. And that's Kreider's first goddamn point of the series as well. But they had that one shorthanded goal. Zabinijad also had it. I think it kind of was a shot past the Lafreniere. But besides that, they have not really risen to the occasion. Panarin, only three assists, not a single goal. I thought Panarin was kind of noticeably bad last night in terms of getting pushed off the puck, turning the puck over. And then there was one example where he was off the rush and decided to just hold on to it for far too long instead of ripping it. It's looking like last year in the playoffs, Panarin scared to shoot, scared to be the dynamic playmaker that he is. And as a result, the, when the Florida top guys are balling out like Verhage, like Kachuk, and meanwhile, you have your top guys shuddering, you're lying on Alexi Lafreniere to score four goals in five games for your team. Barkley Goudreau has to rise to the occasion. It is just unacceptable for the New York Rangers. When looking at their overall distribution of ice time, I think this does factor in, considering they are so top-heavy right now, and the fact that when looking at guys that have played over 22 minutes a night, this comes to us from The Athletic. Zabinijad played 24 minutes last night. Panarin played 23. Trocek played 22. Kreider played 22. When looking at the Florida Panthers, only one player played above 22 minutes, and it was Sam Reinhart. Their top guys are not producing, in part because they're being overworked. They don't have the depth that the Florida Panthers have. So as we get deeper in this series, first two games... I thought the Rangers played pretty well, but as this series is dragged out and their top guys are relied on to do much more, they're getting tired. Not an excuse, not a valid excuse, don't get me wrong, but when Florida has a fantastic top nine and even their bottom line is pretty impressive, Kachuk and Barkov don't have to play 22, 23, 24 minutes a night, and as a result, they're fresher, they're more explosive, especially late in games. When looking at it, I thought the New York Rangers, especially in game four, they looked great in that first period, but then the second and third on, the Florida Panthers kind of dominated them. When looking at the only reason why the Rangers are still heading to a game six. It's clearly Igor Shesterkin. He has stepped up in a big way. Even though he has kind of let in some soft goals the last two games, he stopped like three or four great A chances. So although the, the, the low lights have been there for Shesterkin, it, it should have been massive two to three three, four, maybe even, not not five, but three to four goal wins for the, for the Florida Panthers the net in the past two games. Another thing that I think the Rangers should maybe do coming into game six, and I don't think it's going to happen considering he's the captain and the other guy is a veteran player, Truba Gustafson. You either need to split them up completely. They have been dreadful in these playoffs, especially in the last game. I can't see you maybe healthy scratching your captain. I, I understand that that would be a bad look in terms of leadership, but he has been taking so many goddamn penalties. I think I saw a stat. He's taken like 11 minor penalties in these playoffs or just 11 overall penalties. The next closest is like seven or eight. He, you, you can't trust him. You, you cannot trust him at this point. And Gustafson is also not playing to the level you expected. Even though you signed him for the league minimum, you expect him to be far better than this. He is not there defensively. Now, the options aren't fantastic. They're either Zach Jones or Chad Ruedel, but I think that you one of them should draw in. I think you probably should take Gustafson out for game six and try to change something up in terms of maybe a different partner can help out Truba because right now that pair is a total liability whenever they're out there on the ice. Something needs to happen in terms of that. Now, in looking more positively at what the Florida Panthers are doing right, I think they are are dominating the board battle, their way that they cycle the puck, keep possession alive in their own offensive zone. You're not seeing that from the Rangers. You're seeing the Panthers dominate possession. It seems like Barkov or Hagee come out with every puck when they go to the greasy areas. And their blue liners are far more efficient at navigating the blue line, creating high danger chances, keeping possession in, lo in line. The offensive zone possession from the Florida Panthers has really impressed me in this series versus the Rangers. It's kind of just been off the rush 
kind of just get a shot off. Then we get back on defense and nothing really materializes. Florida has had sustained 20, 30, 40 minute long segments in their own offensive zone, putting so much pressure on Igor Shosturkin. And although he has stood tall, eventually they're going to get one through just because they're, they're throwing such a myriad of shots and it, getting some pretty da- high danger chances on like a Florida Panthers that just throw from the outside and just Durkin can deal with that. They are rebound menaces in front of the net. They get to the middle of the ice and create these high danger chances. When looking at the series probability at this point, I would say, I think the stat is once a team goes up 3-2 uh, after a game five where it's tied 2-2, it's 78%. I would make it even higher considering Florida is going back home for game six to kind of close it out. I'd go 85-15 right now in flavor of the Florida Panthers to win this series. Overall, Stanley Cup odds, I'd say the Panthers have about a 41% chance to win the Stanley Cup at this point versus the New York Rangers. It's probably all the way down to 6% considering they only have a 15% chance now and then I'd probably still love them as an underdog against whoever comes out of the West. So the Florida Panthers got to be your odds on favorite to win the Stanley Cup right now considering they're up 3-2 and in the other series series it's only 2-2 no one has a clear advantage but when looking at the Dallas Stars versus the Edmonton Oilers very impressive performance from the Edmonton Oilers in game four I thought that they really dominated after the the, the Dallas Stars had that one had why Johnson got in alone that was kind of not really Stuart Skinner's fault then there was the butt goal but after that I thought Edmonton really locked in really showed some resilience after blowing a two goal lead in the prior game I was very impressed with them they dominated possession and they got the 5-2 win when looking at what led to this I I think Knobloch switching up the lineup was massive in that sense. And the fact that he brought in Corey Perry and uh, McLeod, and they were massive. They didn't just come into a fourth line role. He said, I trust Trey Seidel to drive that second line with Perry and McLeod. And that is exactly what happened. They were the best line for the Edmonton Oilers in terms of advanced stats and just overall generating offense it was apparent that they really clicked and if Dreisaitl can continue to do that with Perry and McLeod and they have that third line which isn't as maybe as good as Dallas's third line but the third line of uh, Kane Henrique and Holloway that's a solid third line previously Kane and Holloway were with Dreisaitl and then the third line of of Henrique Hall, uh, K- uh, McLeod and Perry really wasn't that impressive. So the Edmonton Oilers, now that they kind of switched up these lines, they do have three pretty effective lines instead of stacking it. Definitely, I didn't like the idea of stacking McDavid and Dreisaitl against this deep of a Dallas Stars team. But prior, the Edmonton Oilers really only had one effective line. But Dreisaitl has found his groove with Perry and McLeod, two, especially in Perry, a physical pest that can kind of throw some big hits and get the get the opposing team awfully on Dreisaitl. And also, he switched the defense pairs. I thought that was really effective. You could not have ran back Darnell Nurse and Cody Cece after what we saw in the first three games of the series. He went Nurse and Kulak, Broberg and Cece and it was apparent. Darnell Nurse outside of the butt goal had a far better game. He had a 61.6% expected goals percentage in game four. I thought he actually defended pretty solid. You cannot go back to Cece and Nurse. That is a big no. You're not going to separate Bouchard and Ekholm because they're just so goddamn good but mixing up those second and third pairs I thought was fantastic by Chris Knobloch. It clearly did not working after game two and game three dropping it. The Edmonton Oilers were far better at possessing the puck and just overall getting into the dangerous spots in game four. And as a result, they put up five goals. Well, one was an empty net, but it put up five goals. When looking at What Dallas needs to do, my main complaint with Dallas in this series, and I think the thing that can flip, that can change, is the Marchment to Shane Pavelski line. I think DeBoer needs to potentially switch up his lines considering how bad this line has been in this series. When looking at it, Marchment's a minus three, only has 1.1 goal. Duchesne is a minus two, has zero points, and Pavelski is a minus three and has zero points. When looking at them in game four, they had a 10.4% expected goals percentage. In game one, that was 28% 28% and they lost. In game two, they had a 2.7% expected goals percentage. They somehow won that game despite them being that bad at five on five. And then in game three, when they won, they had an 88.3% goals per- expected goals percentage. They have been far too inconsistent. And when looking at it, when talking about the depth of Dallas, we thought, hey, that second line can contend with the Leon Dreisaitl second line. That has not been the case. They either need to be separated, bring a winger down from the first line or bring a winger up from the third line. They need to do something Thing with that because that pairing that, that that overall line has not been effective for the Dallas Stars and we thought that the one advantage Dallas would have outside of goaltending obviously which we're going to get to 
was the fact that they are three lines deep. But when their line is playing this bad, and it's three pretty solid players, it's not like they brought up Craig Smith to be on this line. And we can talk about that later. I don't know why Craig Smith came out of the lineup in game four. I did not like that decision from Peter DeBoer. Not saying that would have been the difference between a win or a loss, but I think Craig Smith should draw back into the lineup. But Dallas needs that line to be better because we can all agree on a good night, they are in a very, very effective line that should be scoring a ton. But the fact that there's only one point between all three of those players through four games of this series is simply unacceptable for the Dallas Stars. Yes, Jason Robertson and Rupa Hints, they need to be on their game. That goes without saying, but this second line really needs to step up. Now, when looking at the defense score, Chris Tanev's status is massive. Whether or not they're going to have Chris Tanev tonight could determine this entire series. If he's out tonight and then just isn't the same player, even when he turns in Game 6 and Game 7, say you get 70-75% of Chris Tanev, considering the dude was in a boot that might have just been precautionary. But if Chris Tanev is not the same player, I'd probably pick the Dallas Stars to win this series. I think that he is that massive for the Dallas Stars. Just def- it, Not only is he fantastic defensively, that goes without saying. He's their best de- defensive defenseman right now, one of the best defensive defensemen in the entire NHL. But it's not only the fact of how important he is, It's the fact that they don't really have anybody to replace him. It's not like they have a seventh defenseman that's very a veteran that can step in and play pretty big minutes like maybe some other teams. If Chris Tanev is out of the lineup, they're going to have to go to Liam Bichelle, their 2022 first-round pick that's only 20 years old. And on top of the fact that they're already basically playing with five defensemen, they have Alex Petrovic in for Nils Lundqvist, who also didn't really cut it. And Petrovic's only playing 12 minutes a night. So if they have to bring in Bichelle, that means Petrovic's probably going to have to play 15, 16 minutes. I imagine Bichelle's not going to play massive minutes. So it is going to be, Ryan is going to be your number three, your consensus number no, Ryan Suter's going to be your number four defenseman. My bad. But Ryan Suter's going to have to play 21, 22 minutes in tough minutes against guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl if Tanev is not ready to go. This loss of Tanev is going to be huge for the Dallas Stars. Apparently, Peter DeBoer is optimistic that he can return. But again, after taking the shot to the leg and having to deal with being a walking boot, we don't know if it's going to be 100% Chris Tanev. That is going to be massive for the Dallas Stars. But for the Stars... You got to get Tanev. You got to get him at 100%. You got to get that second line cooking. And if you're Edmonton, just more of the same. Keep Darnell Nurse far away from Cody CC. And I think these defensive pairs have been far more effective. McDavid, Dreisaitl, need to play good. No shit. So when looking at this series, if Tanev is healthy and if Tanev's ready to go, I still think that I'd have the Stars at 55% to 45% to win this series. If Tanev is not, let's say Tanev's out tonight, then 70%. I'd probably flip it to Stars 47% likely Edmonton Oilers 53 and then for the cup odds right now I'm going to go with the Stars at 28% and then the Edmonton Oilers at 25% I think a fully healthy Dallas Stars would have a better chance against the Florida Panthers I think they're just the, 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 the deeper team like we talked about before I think the Oilers would have a shrug I would have struggled a bit against the Florida Panthers so let me know in the comments what do you think and obviously with Stars versus Oilers it goes without saying I don't need to break this down Stuart Skinner cannot shit the bed in one of these games if he shits the bed and allows four goals it's probably going to be over. If Dallas wins tonight and Stewart Skinner sits the bed and they have no confidence heading into game six, then the Dallas Stars are looking very good. But it goes without saying. So let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? What do you think about these matchups? Who do you think is going to advance? Who do you think is going to get eliminated? Do you think the Rangers force a game seven? Who do you think wins tonight? Edmonton versus Dallas. I'll be seeing the next one.